Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Greg Marshall, and today I'm here with... Dr. Cameron Garber. All right, and we're going to go over how to run a successful physical therapy practice yep. and what it takes to, you know, increase sales, patients, um, profit margins, all that. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I've got Cameron here. Cameron, how long have you been in the physical therapy space? So physical therapy since I was 14 years old, so like 21 years. Wow. So I blew my knee out skiing, and from that point on, I like... Everything I did, internships in school, everything was to get into physical therapy school and become a physical therapist. Got it. So, like, honestly, I've been in the industry for a long, long time, but practicing as a physical therapist since 2010. Oh, great. But still, that's that's a good, yeah. good amount of time. And owned my own practice in some way, shape, or form since about 2013. Got it. And uh, where, where are you located? So, so the physical therapists out there know where you're at. Yeah, so right now I'm in South Ogden, Utah. So, okay. Yeah. And where is that? So that is... <laughs> Couple uh, about an hour north of Salt Lake. Got it. So, so yeah. we're so we're near Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. Um, I'm also based out of this area as well. So um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So first, what have you learned? So what are some pitfalls to be aware of oh, when man. you're running a physical therapy practice? Well, so there's a there's a few things. One is you've got to deliver value, and you've got to focus on the value that you're delivering, and so really focusing on the patient and what they need and less on their pain, less on your bottom line. The more you focus on them and delivering as much value as you can to them, that's where you're gonna be successful because they'll have a good result because you're focused on really what's gonna help them improve the best. And Got so it. I would say that's the main thing is deliver value and focus on delivering value to them. And really, I guess pitfalls, um, good question, there, there are many. Really, don't waste time on on things that don't make you more successful. Got it. And, and what's and that mean? Well, so there's a million different areas. One, um, I tend to get rabbit holed into trying to learn more and learn more got and it, learn it, more. It. Honestly, I know enough as a practitioner as well as, as a business owner to really be okay. Yeah. But I, uh, rather than working on my business, I tend to try to learn got more. It about what I can be doing differently rather than doing what I know really well. Got it, got it. And I think that's a big rabbit hole that a lot of people get, you know, that they squirrel down. And focus on what I, I can really do well. And then also I think one thing that I tend to do is I spend a lot of time doing $15 an hour work yeah, yeah. Um, instead of focusing on what's going to make me $150 yes. dollar an hour work instead. Well, you know. you know what? Actually, you just hit a point where um, it's kind of a, a shift in mindset mm -hmm. because logically, it makes sense. If I do everything myself, then I'll make more money. Yeah. But you're not accounting for the opportunity cost mm -hmm. of big time. You know, you doing the you know ten dollar an hour job yeah. ends up meaning you're not doing the hundred fifty dollar hour job. So, right, and you burn yourself out yep. big time because it takes so much time. Some of yep. those things, and it's repetitive, and it's just, yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't the the key is it won't energize you, right? Mm -mm. It usually no, no. drains and saps your energy. Yeah, yeah. And you need energy in order to grow a business. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> and to be to really be present for every patient. So you can do a lot of stuff on the back end of things, right? But if your patient interactions are terrible, then it's not going to matter. Got it. And vice versa, right? If you're a great clinician, but you don't have the back end set up right, then it doesn't matter. Right? Yep. So you have to have both. And so making sure that you have ways to do you know, the stuff that I really am not good at or too tedious or I don't understand or I'd have to go one, down one of those learning rabbit holes. For sure. So that's why I hired you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, is to help me avoid some of those pitfalls. I can go, go down the hole for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've already done it and so you know it and I don't have to waste my time. I can just say, Greg, what's my strategy yep. here? Here's what I want to do and, and we can nail it. For right? sure, for sure. And so that I think that was one of my biggest early, uh, you know, faux pas was, feeling that I had to shoulder it all yeah, myself. Yeah. And I still I still do that way too much. Um, it has been helpful getting some interns in here and getting sure. you in here and, sure. and working with some of the people that I work with um, in you know other spaces. It's been super helpful to help me learn, not by buying another course or another yeah. thing, instead really focusing on doing more of what I know. Yep. And, you know, another thing that he's mentioning is investing in your business, right? So mm -hmm. investing in people, even if it's uh, time invested in training your interns. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't always, when, when you hear the word investment, a lot of people just think only money. money. Yeah. And they try to run away from that because they don't want to invest, right. right? But there's also time and energy. So if you don't have a lot of money, you can utilize 
time, energy, and investing in your people, and it will bring money back. The key yeah. is making sure you're uh, investing your time in revenue generating uh, right. activities. Right, right. That right. Not only time. get you new patients, but most importantly, keep the ones that you got happy. Right, right. It's easy to get squirreled into something that is kind of a pet project that you like, that is satisfying to you as a clinician, but that doesn't really move the needle forward sure. in terms of business progress. For sure. And that's, I think that's tough. budgeting out time, because I, I do think it's important to keep you excited as a clinician. Oh, right? absolutely. You probably need to have things that kind of get you going. So mm -hmm. budgeting out time each week to maybe allow yourself to just do it guilt-free, right. I think would be a good idea because... You don't want to necessarily only go, it's only about the money and only about the bottom line. Right, right. You still do want to invest in your learning and your growth, but just make sure that it's planned and you know that it's planned. 100%. And that's, I think that's one of the hardest things and probably one of the biggest lessons um, that I'm still working on learning is scheduling out my time better. Those times in between patients and really planning out my day, being willing to block out periods of time mm -hmm. and not scheduling patients during that is so hard when you're first starting out because it's like, I'll see that person whenever I yeah. can see them so I sure. can make that money, right? Sure. And if, you, but if that keeps you from really working on your business so that you're just burning yourself up working yeah. in your business, um, it, it's a short-term gain, yeah. long-term loss strategy. And so block out the time to work on your business and do the things you need to do. Huge, Got huge it. help. Still and, working on that one sometimes. <laughs> well, and you know, as a business owner myself too, it's always a, you never end, right? It's a mm -hmm. constant learning. How can I be more efficient? How can I do yeah. better? And you can't get better unless you're trying things. And, uh, you know, if, if you're not failing, that means you're not trying enough things. Yeah, right? yeah. So, absolutely. Um, you know how I am about testing and seeing theories and see how it works. Right. And, and just not being attached to one certain way of doing things, but being right. open to trying new stuff to see how can I optimize the business. Ab absolutely. I it's, it's a lot like patient care, right? If something's not working or you've got that patient that it's like normally this works but it's just not quite the same for them um you go back to the drawing board you try to find another idea to to create the right type of stress on the body to get the result that you want right for sure same same idea with the business you've got to you know manipulate the things that you can to create the right type of reactions that you want to get out of sure. out of your marketing out of your you know training your your employees whatever that is it, it's finding that right message or that yeah. right thing, that right stimulus to help them. So what about, so what's the number one question or not even question, the number one struggle mm -hmm. that also every industry has a struggle, right? Whether it's a gym, whether it's a real mm -hmm. estate, whatever. What's the number one struggle in the physical therapy space when it comes to operating and running a business? And what have you found has worked for you? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I think sales and marketing being part of the sales process. We really, we, we learn how to be really good clinicians in terms of identifying impairments and treating them. We're really bad clinicians at helping people stick to a plan of care. We know how to create a plan of care yeah. really well, yeah. but we're really bad at helping our patients no, like this is our plan and here's what we need to do to stick to it. And if you stick to it, you'll get the, that optimal result. We're really bad at selling that. And it's because we're bad at sales in yeah, general. Got it. And so from the very first interaction we might have with somebody on Facebook or when we go into the doctor's office, if that's how you market, which I don't love to do. Anyway, <laughs> um, we don't do a very good job at selling our services because we sell really we sell pain relief yeah. instead of life change yeah. and we sell uh, we're just really not very good at helping people be in a mindset where they're ready to make a decision sure. and so i think that's something that we really really struggle with and i to me the biggest way to get over that and to really learn how to sell to help to sell in a way that's not the sleazy car salesman selling um is I, one, get a mentor. Get somebody that knows sales. And so, again, that's, <laughs> that's why I hit up Greg. Um, I, I had seen Greg in action actually selling uh, personal training to people yeah. several years ago, way yeah. back when, right? And he was really good at helping people get out of their own way to make the best decision for their health. 
And that's the thing. We're, we're not selling them in a way that's, that's to make a quick buck off them. Mm -hmm. Really, the idea is if you really believe that your program that you offer your patients um, is, is really going to be life-changing and is really the answer they need for their mm -hmm. health, then you have to sell them on that so that they buy in enough to sure. get the result. Because they'll only get that result if they do what you ask them to exactly. do. And they won't do what you ask them to do unless they're bought in. And so that's why we sell them, is to help them have that buy-in. And yeah. so unless we know how to sell well, we'll never really be the best clinician we can be because they'll never fully buy into your plan sure. of care. For sure, so I think too, one of the big uh, the big shifts, so I sold, you know, I taught sales training basically to yeah. Uh, lots and lots of trainers and trainers I think are similar and as, as as far as mindset mm -hmm. to a physical therapist when it comes to feeling guilty mm -hmm. of selling what they have to offer right. because there's they believe that in order to be a good trainer they right. have to be poor yeah. not ask people for money and I mm -hmm. think that you don't have to do one or the other I think going into it with a mindset of like it's my moral obligation my duty to make sure that I go ahead and you know, right. sell them what I've got because I know it'll help. Right. It really is your moral obligation. Like, we are here to help them and to serve them and to help them get better. And so by not giving them that option to get better because you think it may be too expensive for them, you're, you're placing your belief of, man, what I do is really expensive yep. on them. And so you're limiting their ability to have that solution yep. by not selling them. And so really, it's, and it's almost, it's almost selfish It is in selfish, the sense yeah. that if you don't try to do it because you're actually thinking more about you right. than them. If you just think about the client or the customer, right. you won't have any hesitation because right. the reason why you have hesitation is because you're absorbed in your own thoughts. Absolutely. I mean, you think that same person, A, is going to go buy something on Amazon tonight, <laughs> like, that you're saying, oh, you know, like, uh, that's kind of expensive and so you're nervous to bring it up and, and whatever. But they're also paying 300 bucks a month for cable yeah. TV yeah. and for all these other their things. Their cell phones. Yeah, their plans. Right. And... That they could cut way back on if they knew that that was going to help improve their health and allow them to live the kind of lifestyle that they wanted to live, that you have that answer. They would be more than happy cutting back in those other areas of their life yep. and, and giving that money to you if you present it that way to them. And so it's from the first interaction you have with them on social media or wherever you interact with your people to when they sign on the dotted line with you, the, the key is that you are selling them. But it's a process exactly. that you really have to, to work on how you interact with them at each stage of the game. So I would say that's kind of the number two thing is think through your process from yep. beginning to end. So one is learn how to sell yeah. and sell well, <laughs> and then know your your sales process. Sure. So from very first interaction through signing on the dotted line and, and even through their full course of treatment, mm -hmm. you should be continuing to sell them on that plan of care to discharge and they go home. Um, and whatever plan you have for them, I always create a discharge plan that keeps them interacting with me. Because that's you're still selling them on this fit, healthy, active lifestyle. Yeah. And so you have to know every touch point along the way and how you can continue to sell well, them. Well, and my guess also would be, and you know, obviously you're the expert in this field, but my guess would be if someone has a bad back or a bad knee, that oh, just yeah. doesn't go away. No. Right? There's some there's some form of maintenance that has to be done. So that's why I think it's right. so important to have those plans mapped out as far as right. what am I what's the next product and service that I'm going to offer these individuals Absolutely because they we know as a professional you know right. if someone has a bad back or bad knee it never goes away it never goes away no it well the 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 root cause of why they have that bad knee never goes away unless we specifically address that yep. right so yeah, somebody comes in with knee pain or low back pain and they're sedentary, overweight, and haven't worked since or haven't exercised since like the Reagan administration, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, that type of a thing, yeah, they come in for knee pain and we do our stretchy band exercises and blah, 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 and put them on e stem and ice and, and they feel better for a little while. And so we get them back to where they were before they came yeah. in and, and really back to the level of pain that they were in before yep. they started with me. Yep. And so it's tolerable because this is where I was before. And so we discharge and that's what insurance says we'll pay for. And we really 
leave them at a disservice yeah. because the real cause of their pain had nothing to do with their knee, had everything to do lifestyle. with their lifestyle. Yeah. And so if we can treat their lifestyle, that gives us years worth of, worth of things that we can do for yep. that person, right? Exactly. There's always something else we can do. And so if we think through that timeline and say, okay, what's the product that I after offer yep. after that yep. and after that? So that they have a way to keep progressing and that they have a, a journey that they can go on where they change their actual life and lifestyle instead of just treat their knee yep. pain. You're treating a symptom. It's really no different than just going and getting drugs, get, sure. going and getting pain meds or having surgery. If we're just treating their pain, we're really leaving a lot on the table monetarily, um, satisfaction-wise for them, and satisfaction-wise for you. You're, you're really not serving your patient to the full extent. Well, and the other thing to think about, too, is like you should be thinking of multiple ways to have a recurring revenue mm -hmm. because like in any successful business, yeah. the money's never really made on the first sale. It's made on the second, third, fourth, and tenth sale. Yeah. And really the game that we should all be playing is how do I um, offer such a great product, such a great service right. that this person literally never wants to leave. They're glad right. to invest because it's their health, right? right. I mean, and that's... Look at like uh, so working true. out and fitness. You don't just like do a quick, you know, six week workout plan and then that's it and you keep all the results. You yeah. need uh, recurring, you know, right. help. And right. that's what I think you guys do, right? Right, yeah, absolutely. So you don't you don't get fit in six weeks and then all right, that's see you it. later. And it stays. Yeah, and it just stays. That'd be great if you could find that product, right? It'd be very, very well. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't work that way, right? Our body is constantly rebuilding and it breaking itself down or building itself up. And based on the amount of load we put through our body is whether it decides to build up or break down, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, basics, principles of science that we use every day in physical therapy. And so understanding those principles, we should understand that that six weeks isn't going to be enough. And so we've got to create that timeline for a, a complete lifestyle of health and fitness. And we really can, like you said, fourth, fifth, tenth sale, there is ways to keep selling them. Again, you're selling them to help, not selling them to pad your pocket. Yeah. Although that is an end but result. There's, but because there's nothing you're wrong with that. No, not <laughs> at all, because you're delivering so much value to them. And so if you're not delivering value, then maybe you need to rethink what yeah. you're doing and how you're doing it. But really, if you have a product that you believe in that this really can help people, then honestly, you've got to get out of your own way mm -hmm. of selling them. Because if you really believe that your product, the way that you want to interact with your clients can benefit their life and lifestyle, then go for it. Go all in and believe in, in yourself, believe in your product, yep. and you really will like benefit their lives. You will deliver that value. And you'll have a very successful and rewarding business. Well, I, I actually just reminded me of something I want to really talk about, yeah. which I know is really prevalent in the personal training industry, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure it's the same in your industry because it happens in all industries, which yeah, yeah. is um, the mindset of there's all – every industry has like one to two big players oh, in yeah. the space mm -hmm. that are very good at selling yeah. and marketing themselves, but – they sometimes aren't as good in the profession. And oh, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. And here's the thing. It's natural to get the rest of the people who are not at their financial level to kind of complain or, you know, point out kind of right. their weaknesses and how they right. really don't know what they're doing. And, and you know, it goes oh, on and on. It's huge in physical therapy. And, and right. I can tell you in personal training, it's it's the Instagram trainer. Well, it's the same right? thing. Uh, your realty clients. Yep. You were just telling me how they like, oh, don't tell this secret to somebody yeah. else. And like, oh, don't you don't want the big box yep. realty companies to find that secret yep. out. And it's like the same idea, right, in every industry. So Greg works in just about every industry imaginable <laughs> now. And, and really, when we've talked about it, so many of those principles are the same. But yeah, the same idea. There's always that big guy yep. that, that you're afraid of, and so you try to tear them down. Well, and, and the thing about um, pay attention to that because that's, it's not going to help you mm -mm. to do that. What you want to do is have an open mind and go, what is that individual doing that's causing the financial part to be so great? Yeah. And how do I uh, integrate you know, my expertise, my knowledge, and my experience while simultaneously using those techniques that those individuals are using so that you can right. offer the best product because now you're offering 
the best service and product you can you know give right and you're also making and earning a very good income and that's what i think everyone should strive to do is have how do i have the best product and how do i have the best sales and marketing process not right. one or the other right and that's where i think the gap needs to close is people to think right. how do i how do i offer the full spectrum of everything from start to finish if you're a true professional yeah you and you really enjoy what you do you want to take it very seriously and go I don't want to be strong in one area and just terribly weak in another. My goal in my entire career is to be strong in the whole thing. And, you know, right. you may never reach perfection, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't strive for it. Right. And it may not be just you, but it, you're, the product that you're offering. So your staff, your, you know, as Experience. you grow, yeah, the, the people you collect to help you be able to do that. So I think too often, especially guys like me that start out just solo practitioner, you're like I've got to be that all just me. Yep. And as you grow, you'll find that you can bring people in to help you do certain parts of that. But the Absolutely. more well-rounded you can be for your client, the better. But some of that is bringing in help, help with your marketing and yep. sales process. And and like I said, we we talk about marketing and sales like it's this front end thing to get people in the door and and make you money. And so it seems like this. Like it's sneeze, not part of it. Like it's not part of the entire process. Yep. Again, everything you do should be part of your sales process, and it shouldn't be about getting people in even per se. It really should be about how do I serve them best. And if you focus on that, and that's your sales process is how you're going to serve those people best. You're going to get people in For because sure. you're going to be giving them knowledge and information and. And all of the things they need to really be successful, and then when they are successful, they they will share that with other people. So the more you do that, the more you just wow people with the with what you offer and what you deliver, the more you'll be successful. And the money thing will take care of itself. Sure. And so don't be afraid of the money. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Like you want, obviously you want the money. Yep. And so it should be that natural consequence of leading your business in the right way. Well, and the other thing to add to that is. Look at the entire process and become obsessed with it. So um, kind of a quote that I heard that I really like, and there's, I don't think it's a coincidence that he's one of the richest people in the world too, yeah. is from Jeff Bezos, mm -hmm. which says his company is uh, customer obsessed. Mm. customer experience obsessed meaning <laughs> I would agree <laughs> yeah how do I offer the best easiest fastest cheapest solution possible yeah. to my customer and and not veer off from that and look at what their sales are oh. every single year and the the exponential growth that it has look at the percentage of your life that you live on Amazon <laughs> like exactly like I I listen to my music through Amazon. I watch my, like, whatever TV content I watch, it's usually through, through Amazon. Amazon. Or I, like, so much of my life is on Amazon because they really are this one-stop shop for so many things. Well, right? the other thing that um, I think is really important is it's actually overcoming or showing you that the yeah. belief that you have to have, in order to sell good, you can't take care of your customers. Yeah. It's false. It's actually the right mindset to have to think, I right. want to take care of my customers, and then how do I add a sales right. and marketing system to basically funnel them in right. and complement what I'm doing? Right. Your sales process really should be about blessing their lives, exactly. like giving them the best possible chance at having the best possible outcome. Exactly. So don't be afraid of uh, sales and marketing, and if you want to... Um, you know, grow your business, think differently than everyone else, which is how do I connect the sales and marketing process to the customer experience and then even the follow up after yeah. they become a client so that you can build something that is sustainable right. and something that is, you know, treated with care because a lot of times uh, business owners do treat sales and marketing like this icky thing that I have to do right. just so I can do what I love to do. Right. Instead of finding a, a way to look at it and go, sales and marketing is giving me an opportunity to do it, mm -hmm. and how do I make that sales and marketing experience so well that right. the, the client or patient doesn't feel right. icky about it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, and if you can dial that in, it really is so helpful. And again, I stress, like going through every touch point along the way, I mean, my marketing strategy changed everything that I do from even how I take payment. 
Yep. Like I take payment through a system that's a little bit faster and cleaner and easier, but it also includes my email system because it just got so sticky to send like an email from one system and a reminder from another system sure. and a this and that and the other. So I had to find one that I could do everything in one system. Yep. And so even those are parts of your sales process. If it's all cumbersome and they get five different emails from different places or if they're, you know, if your process doesn't really serve the patient mm -hmm. and serve you, then it's not, it's well, not right. The thing that uh, Cameron brought up too that's important is um, also become obsessed with reducing friction. Yeah. So yep. what he's that's doing exactly, there yeah. is that's actually making the process. You want the process to be from when the first time the customer hears you yeah. all the way through, they go through your sales process and your experience to feel like it was so natural they can't really notice that they just went through it. Right. And that's right. basically the goal. The goal is to make it so smooth so easy mm -hmm. that when they come in, they enjoy the marketing sales process. They enjoy the results they get from their experience with you. Right. And then they want to actually talk to you after. Right. Absolutely. And refer their friends. And they leave happy, like because the process you've refined the process such that they leave happy instead of like putting their wallet back in their pocket, going, "Oh man, I just paid that yeah. for that." You know. Exactly. And so if you can make every touch point, uh, every friction point along the way as smooth and easy and natural as possible, you will win. But that's sales. Yep. Like, that's it sales. Is. And people don't realize that. But that's, you're really helping them to buy in to the entire process. And that's, that's sales. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, you know, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, or the follow, the like, or the comment, the share, do all that stuff. Right. Um, but this is uh, Cameron. Yep. He's out based out of where again? So Ogden, Utah. So South Ogden, Utah, Body Smart Physical Therapy um, and Metabolic Testing. So, And yeah. if you ever need help as a physical therapist um, doing the metabolic testing or helping to grow your business, make sure to reach out to Cameron. He's really good at it. And uh, once again, thank you for being on. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, look forward to more of the videos. So we'll talk to you guys later. Okay.